I'm very pleased to present to you uh, today the highlight of ASCAP's latest economic and social survey for Asia and the Pacific 2011. This is the major launch of whilst we are launching it across Asia Pacific in 30 countries. I'm pleased um, to say that over the years, this publication has established itself as the most comprehensive and objective annual review of the economic and social development and policy challenges in the Asia Pacific region. Now the region recovered strongly in 2010 from the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. And the region's developing economies grow, grew at 8.8%. Now in 2011, growth in the developing economies of the region is forecast to be 7.3% in 2011. Asia Pacific region will remain by far the most strong, the strongest growth region in the world and the locomotive of global growth. Now its growth rate will be nearly one and a half times more than that of any other region in the world. So that's the good news. The region's recovery has come under pressure in recent months from increasing price increases driven by dramatic increases in the global food and energy prices. Excessive global liquidity has been partly responsible for the commodity price rises, coupled with the supply disruptions in key producing economies due to adverse climate conditions. And these supply shocks were exaggerated by speculative activity in the commodity markets in the context of massive liquidity expansion. While some of the monetary tightening may be inevitable, the importance of supply shocks in explaining rising food prices means that the monetary policy will have its limitation to combat such limitations. Measures are required to address the root supply side causes of food price rises at the national, regional and global levels. At the national level, food and energy price rises should be combated with targeted measures to directly impact prices and reduce the burden on the poor. Besides trying to reduce prices, through the lowering of tariffs and taxes, social protection measures should be undertaken in the form of food vouchers, the targeted income transfers, and school feeding programs. Buffer stocks of food should also be established, and speculative activity in food commodities should be regulated. Now let me turn quickly to the Kazakhstan economic outlook and the challenges that uh, we face. Now, after a modest 1.2% growth in 2009, the economy expanded by a robust 7% in 2010. Now, owing to a favorable external environment, the economy is expected to expand by 6.2% in 2011. Strong government response was vital in stabilizing the banking sector and turning the economy around. The recovery in global demand for oil and other mineral products was reflected in the strong performance of industrial production, which expanded by nearly 10% in 2010. The agriculture sector, however, contracted significantly as gain, grain harvests were badly affected by the severe droughts. Inflation, however, is on the rise driven by the higher food prices. The average annual inflation was at 7.1% in 2010, but has exceeded 8% since January this year, as global food prices continue to rise rapidly. The government introduced price ceiling for essential food items in February, and the central bank has tightened monetary policy. 
The government continues to support the economy, including through higher social spending, and I would like to congratulate you for that, Mr. Prime Minister. And the government in 2010 initiated a five-year industrial and innovative development program designed to improve the the diversity and competitiveness of the economy. The current account balance returned to a surplus of 4.5% of the GDP in 2010 from a deficit previous year on the back of the strong global demand for the country's oil out, uh, export. In the medium term, like elsewhere in the region, steady efforts to diversify the economy including a focus on regional economic cooperation and to pursue a more inclusive development and sustainable development path will be important. Trade and energy cooperation with the major regional economies will become more prominent in the coming years. Improved regulations of the banking sector and the maintenance of financial stability will continue to be important Enhanced regional energy cooperation would benefit actually Kazakhstan.